the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Gideon ordered his men to do two things. Covering up a torch in an earthen pitcher, he bade them at an appointed signal break the pitcher and let the light shine, and then sound with the trumpet crying, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. This is precisely what all Christians must do. First, you must shine, break the pitcher which conceals your light, throw aside the bushel which has been hiding your candle and shine. Let your light shine before men. Let your good works be such that when men took upon you, they shall know that you have been with Jesus. Then there must be the sound, the blowing of the trumpet. There must be active exertions for the ingathering of sinners by proclaiming Christ crucified. Take the gospel to them, carry it to their door, put it in their way. Do not suffer them to escape it. Blow the trumpet right against their ears. Remember that the war cry of the church is Gideon's watchword. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. God must do it. It is his own work. But we are not to be idle. Instrumentally is to be used. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. If we only cry, the sword of the Lord, we shall be guilty of an idle presumption. And if we shout, the sword of Gideon alone, we shall manifest idolatrous reliance on an arm of flesh. We must blend the two in practical harmony. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. We can do nothing of ourselves, but we can do everything by the help of our God. Let us therefore in his name determine to go out personally and serve with our flaming torch of holy example and with our trumpet tones of earnest declaration and testimony and God shall be with us and Midian shall be put to confusion and the Lord of hosts shall reign forever and ever. In the evening withhold not thy hand. In the evening of the day opportunities are plentiful Men return from their labor, and the zealous soul winner finds time to tell abroad the love of Jesus. Have I no evening work for Jesus? If I have not, let me no longer withhold my hand from a service which requires abundant labor. Sinners are perishing for lack of knowledge. He who loiters may find his skirts crimson with the blood of souls. Jesus gave both his hands to the nails. How can I keep back one of mine from his blessed work? Night and day he toiled and prayed for me. How can I give a single hour to the pampering of my flesh with luxurious ease? Up, idle heart, stretch out thy hand to work, or uplift it to pray. Heaven and hell are in earnest. Let me be so, and this evening sow good seed for the Lord my God. The evening of life also has its cause. Life is so short that a morning of manhood's vigor and an evening of decay make the whole of it. To some it seems long, but a four pence is a great sum of money to a poor man. Life is so brief that no man can afford to lose a day. It has been well said that if a great king should bring us great heap of gold and bid us take as much as we could count in a day, we should make a long day of it. We should begin early in the morning, and in the evening we should not withhold our hand, but to win souls is far nobler work. How is it that we so soon withdraw from it? Some are spared to a long evening of green old age. If such be my case, let me use such talents as I still retain, and to the last hour serve my blessed and faithful Lord. By his grace I will die in harness, and lay down my charge only when I lay down my body. Age may instruct the young, cheer the faint, and encourage the desponding. If even tide has less of vigorous heat, it should have more of calm wisdom. Therefore, in the evening, I will not withhold my hand.